Pythagorean Theorem 3D. So we can use the Pythagorean Theorem inside of three-dimensional objects or solids um, where we have right triangles. So for example, a commonly used application for the Pythagorean Theorem would be in what's called the space diagonal. And if we just took a prism like a cube and we put a line from in a regular prism, a space diagonal is a line that goes from the vertex of the prism through the center of the prism to the opposite vertex. If you think of it like if you took a square box and you put a yardstick and you stuck the yardstick into one corner and laid it through, so it ran through the middle of the box and kind of ended up up at the top of the box. So some math teachers will call that stick in the box. So a rectangular prism has four of these space diagonals. And we could use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of this. So let's look at what a problem like that would look like. So the Pythagorean Theorem is useful if we need to find the length of a space diagonal in a rectangular prism. So you can see this right triangle we drew here with legs of A and B and hypotenuse of C. And now hypotenuse of C is representing uh, the space diagonal. So let's say we're asked to find the length of AG, and that's our space diagonal. And so what we're typically looking for are a right triangle with two legs. Well, I can see where I could use one leg, but I don't exactly have two legs here to find this. So first I wanna do is look at the base of this prism. And if I look at this triangle, ABC, I could find though the length of AC by using these two legs, using a leg of 28 and a leg of 12, I could find AC, which will ultimately get me to uh, use the Pythagorean theorem a second time and finding the length of AG. So I'm gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem two different times. So let's first look at this right triangle we have in the base with legs of 12 and eight. And if we flatten it out, it looks like this. We have a leg of 28, a leg of 12, and we're finding that AC. We're finding this A to C. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. We start by writing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Always good to write the formula to start these problems. And then we'll substitute in. Uh, the legs are interchangeable. 12 and 28 have to be the A and the B, but can go in either order. And we're finding the hypotenuse. We're finding the C value. Well, 12 squared is 144, 28 squared is 784. Add those together and take the square root and I get 30.5. So 30.5 is from A to C in two dimensions, or if we look at it in three dimensions, it's from A to C here. So now that I've found from A to C, now I can use the Pythagorean theorem a second time and look at um, finding that space diagonal, the length of AG. So let's now look at this triangle. We have this leg that we found of 30.5. We have a leg of 16, which was already given. So now that I have two of the three sides of a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's like having a leg of 16, that's from G to C, and a leg of AC of 30.5. So we'll use the Pythagorean theorem again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll put in our two legs, 30.5 and 16, and those are interchangeable. And we're finding the hypotenuse of c. So we have 930.25 plus 256. And we have 1,186.25. That is for c squared. To find c, we take the square root and we get 34.4. And our directions were round to the nearest tenth, so we want to put off rounding until the last possible moment to get as close of an answer as possible. Make sure you're reading your directions, because if it says round to the nearest hundredth or round to the nearest whole number and you round to the nearest tenth, it could be wrong. So make sure you're combining good math with answering the question being asked. All right, so let's look at some other applications of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, let's say we have a prism here and the right triangle is drawn. If side A is 1.5 and side B is 2, find side C, round to the nearest tenth. So are we missing a leg or a hypotenuse? Well, we are missing the hypotenuse. So we start with A squared plus B squared equals C squared, the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to put in our two legs. 
1.5 squared is 2.25, 2 squared is 4. Add those together, get 6.25 equals c squared. And we are not done because that's equal to c squared. We want to be equal to c. So to go from c squared to c, we take the square root. We take the square root of the right side. We're going to want to take the square root of the left side. And the square root of 6.25 is 2.5. And we want to make sure that that makes sense. And so if we have a side of one and a half and two, a side of 2.5, that makes sense. It has to be bigger than those two legs. So it lines up. It makes sense that 2.5 would work for C. So you don't want to find out that it's 300. Well, that wouldn't make sense if my other sides were 1.5 and 2. So Or 600. It wouldn't make sense. So make sure that your answer is a reasonable answer. All right, you guys try this one on your own. Pause the video here. Find the length of C. All right, welcome back. So we're starting each of these problems with writing the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We had sides of 15 and 20. And since they gave us A was 15, I put A in for 15 and B was 20. They put in B for 20. Square each. Add. And then take the square root of each side. And we get that C is 25. All right, let's look at a different shape here. We have a triangular prism. And you guys pause the video here and come back, check, see how you did. All right, welcome back. So side OV, O to V, right down there is an altitude from the vertex here at V. And we have, that's 9. And VE is 15. So I'm looking at this right triangle inside of the triangular prism. Well, it's more like a pyramid because we have a square-based pyramid. So, all right, so what do we have here? Are we missing a leg or a hypotenuse? Well, this VE, that is across from the 90 degree angle. So that 15 has to be the hypotenuse. It has to be the C value. So we start with a squared plus b squared is c squared. 15 has to go in for the c. Now the 9, that ov, that could be a or b. That one's interchangeable, but the 15 has to be the c value. Then 9 squared is 81. 15 squared is 225. Now I just need to solve for a. I can subtract 81 from each side. And this one I can actually do in my head. I can take the square root of 144 in my head because I know that 12 times 12 is 144, so A is 12. All right, you guys, let's try a new one. Let's look at a new shape. Let's try this one with a cone. Pause the video here and see if you can find the missing side. All right, welcome back. So we have find the height of the cone with a radius R of 34 and a slant height S of 36 round to the nearest tenth. So the radius is 34. Well, that's a leg, and we're asked to find the height, so we're missing a leg. This S for slant height, that is our hypotenuse. That's the long side, the side opposite of the 90 degree angle. So we start by writing A squared plus B squared is C squared. Then we want to substitute in what we know. Well, we got to get the hypotenuse has to be in the right place. So the C has to be 36. 34 could be A or B, but 36 has to be, this hypotenuse has to go in for C. Then we got 34 squared is 1,156. 36 squared is 1,296. Then we just want to solve for A. Subtract 1,156 from each side. Then we need to take the square root. And the square root of 140 is going to give us a decimal. Our directions are round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to put that in my calculator, find the square root of 140, and I'm going to round that to 11.8 feet. Now, if they give you... If they give you feet, this should be yards, not feet, because it was given in yards. So disregard the feet part. But make sure you're paying attention to whatever units are given. If it, they don't give you a unit, you could just write the word unit. If they give you yards, they give you feet, make sure you write yards or feet. If they say round to the nearest tenth, round to the nearest hundred, make sure you're rounding to the correct place. So on this last one, we found 11.8 yards. All right, here is a hint you'll run into on some textbooks like to use this. Some online publishers like to use this if we have a pyramid. And it says side DC equals 40 feet. What is the length of OE? 
Well, from D to C is 40 feet. We want to know the length of OE, and this would be one of the legs of this triangle that's shown in the middle, like the problem we just did a few months ago. So this altitude that's dropped is going to split this square base in half. So if from D to C is 40, from O to E is 20. So when you run into problems like that, don't let that confuse you that the length of this side of the square is 40, then OE is 20. And I hope that helps you guys with the Pythagorean Theorem in 3D Solids. OU2 spells out. Yeah.